So we're going to be using this big um, structural load-bearing piece of steel that was left over from a job. Uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and, it's, it's been primed, so we're going to strip the paint off of this and go ahead and get it ready. You're going to have a bare, clean bare surface. So I'm going to go ahead and use my angle grinder and knock off some of this paint. But remember guys, always use safety. Use some safety glasses when you're doing something like this. And uh, I'll go ahead and get the angle grinder and just kind of, you know, get some of this off of here. Alright, that's pretty good. I'm going to flip it over here to the other side, and then we'll get to the setup. Alright, now i got the other uh, side straight down. I'm going to try and tap off some of this uh, extra stuff that's on here, really gently. Alright, so basically I've already kind of, I got the, all the paint ground off as you've seen, and I'm uh, going to use this as the sacrificial piece of metal here. I've uh, knocked off a lot of the uh, excess here, as you can see a lot better what this is going to start to turn out to look like, but uh, this will be the first thing I'm going to put through electrolysis. I'm anxious to see how it's going to come out. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get it set up. This is going to be the setup. I'm just going to be suspending it off this piece of wood. And I've got some just like fencing kind of wire here I'm going to suspend it from. And uh, get it all set up. And we're going to get rolling here. Oh, and don't forget, you're going to need the super washing soda. And what this is is sodium carbonate and baking soda is baking soda is sodium bicarbonate and everyone's online says that this stuff works better and you're gonna need one tablespoon per gallon is recommended. So uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get things set up and get started and we'll see what we can do with this. Alright you guys, so we're just about ready. Um, I got the whole thing set up for you already. It's unplugged. You want to have everything unplugged when you're setting this up. Um, unplugging it, plugging it in is going to be the one of the last things you want to do. So you want to put your negative terminal onto the object that you're trying to clean and put your positive terminal onto the sacrificial piece of metal there. And you want to put your charger uh, on a separate table or uh, somewhere higher. I have it up on, on some uh, speakers over here. On a, away from this table in case this busts or leaks or anything like that and so you know it won't fry everything but um, I'm going to set the ch car charger on uh, 2 amp which is the trickle charge right now which might maybe try the 10 amp but I'm going to put it on 2 first just to see if this is working and we're going to go ahead and get started uh, I think that's about it um, just be safe guys and when this is on never touch the water never touch the terminal connections never touch the piece of metal always unplug the charger before you touch anything to do with this you don't want to get shocks so uh, without further ado let's go ahead and plug this battery charger in and see what happens uh, oh I see bubbles alright so I'm starting to see bubbles forming so that's a really good sign um, there's, yeah, there's a ton of bubbles forming over here on the, uh, on the sacrificial piece here. Let's see if I can focus that a little better. Yeah, there's tons, tons of bubbles coming off of that. And, uh, we got some other bubbles coming up from, on the old sawed-off shotgun here. Alright, so we're going to let this go for a while definitely working that's the sign you know it's working you see the the water is kind of moving around on its own and there's tons of bubbles coming up um, so we're gonna let's go a while and see see what happens so I'll check back in in a little while all right you guys so this has been out here cooking for about two hours now but it looks like it's been really been doing its job as you can see so uh, all right just hold on a second I'm gonna unplug it 
and we'll check it out. Oh yeah, she's coming along pretty good. A lot of black along the barrel itself, and uh, starting to see a lot of black on the down here below it. So, uh, yep, come along pretty nice. All right, you guys. So uh, it's the next morning. It's been in here about 12 hours, and as you can see, there is a lot of uh, a whole lot of foaming and crud and rust, and there's a whole lot over here by the uh, the sacrificial piece. So let's get it unplugged and uh, take a look at the progress here. Oh yeah, she's looking good. So, uh, whole, a whole lot of black coming through all over. The barrel is looking really nice. I'm do a little manual work to get all this off the uh, the wood. I have to take it apart. I'm curious to see if it's. No, it doesn't want to start to unbreach yet, but, well, there it is. It's looking pretty good, though. So, getting ready to go to work. I'll go ahead and uh, let this cook some more. Stuff's just falling off of here now. It's pretty awesome. All right, so here we are about the 24-hour mark, and you can see the uh, bath is very, very dirty. I'm going to get you guys up on the tripod in a second, and I'm going to pull uh, this uh, sawed-off shotgun out of here. You see it's a whole lot of scum and rust on this. So uh, give me a second, and I'll get you up on the tripod, and we'll check it out together. Alright, so uh, power's off. We're about the 24-hour mark right now. And... Uh, this is what we got so far. It's looking really good. Whole lot of black. Um, a lot of corrosion is gone. I'm gonna take a second and, and uh, scrub some of this away a little bit, and then put it back in. And let it just keep on going. But as you can see, uh, so I give it a little scrub with a, a little copper wire brush, and uh, you can see it's coming along really nice. It is a lot better than it was. You can see a lot more detail in this thing. Um, you see the release for the breech, and you can see the hammer clearly, and the barrel is looking really nice, and except for this massive pit right here. Uh, but you know, like I said, I'm not trying to restore this um, to be functional. It's just to be uh, kind of a memento piece to be hung in the house uh, or placed up on the mantle or. Uh, you know a door frame or something like that to just you know remind me and show me what remind me of what I've found but um here we go we're gonna put it in so this is 24 hour mark with a little scrub down and then I'm gonna put it back in and I'm gonna let it cook for more it might take another 24 hours or more to get this looking right all right guys uh, I also wanted to add that it's here at the 24 hour mark I did take the copper wire brush and I did scrub down the uh, sacrificial piece of metal's face to because uh, it was actually starting to accumulate a lot of rust all on it, getting really scaly. So I uh, hope that will enable it to a little bit better conductivity and uh, get it all plugged up, wired up, set up, ready to roll here again, and plug it back in and let her cook for a little longer. Alright, you guys, so uh, here we are about the 48 hour mark. And uh, the water has surprisingly cleared up, and you really see the uh, the bubbles now uh, coming off of all this. It's pretty wild, but uh, piece is looking really cleaned up. Uh, it's been 48 hours, and uh, go ahead and turn this off, and we're going to put you up on the tripod and we're take a look at it, clean it off a little bit, wipe it down, and see how. Uh, how's she coming along here there she is all her glory 48 hours later um, like I said the breach 
is getting more movement out of it. The hammer is still jammed, but there it is. She's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to let it go another day, I think, just because uh, I've seen so much bubble activity when I came out here. So we'll get it all set back up and get it back to cooking. Alright you guys, so here we are. We're at about the 84 hour mark, three and a half days basically. I didn't come out last night and check on this, but as you can see it's still bubbling pretty good. There's a lot of bubbles coming out of where the uh, hammer and around where the breech is. Uh, there still was a lot of gunk in there. Uh, so let me shut it off, rinse it off a little bit, and uh, we'll see what it looks like right now. It's looking really good though. So, uh, we'll, alright, let's see. Alright guys, so, not a whole lot changed, but um, this is probably about done. There's still a little uh, rust inside here. But like I said, I'm not trying to make this functional. I would have liked for the breach to have been able to close, uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. The breach does have a lot more movement in it, as you can see, but... Um, the hammer is still seized and uh, it's, it's not really trying to close, the breech isn't trying to close at all. Um, I barely make out some words here. Yeah, I might let it go just a little longer and uh, then I'm just going to hit it with some oil and uh, trying to keep it from re-rusting and put it up on a wall. And also there is a sacrificial piece of steel. You can see the crazy amount of rust that's on this thing. So I'm going to get this scraped off and clean it up before I start this up back again. I might pop in a, another item in here with it too. So it get something else started. Alright you guys, so there it is. There's the final product. Um, after about six days of electrolysis and some scrubbing with uh, a little copper brush and a little steel brush also. Um, and now I've uh, actually applied the oil onto this it's with some gun oil to uh, help the rust from coming back again but this is about as far as I'm going to take it I did manage to get the breech closed I can close and open it it's a little tight but it still uh, opens and closes and uh, got the hammer to free up and the um, breech release over here to come free um, also automatic ejection for the shell but um, yeah, like I said, this is, this is as far as I'm going to take it. There's not much else I can really do to this thing. Uh, I'm just going to keep it oiled uh, so that the rust doesn't start to form in this again. Uh, and uh, I did find out that what this is actually is a New England Firearms Model SB1. And I think it's a 12-gauge shotgun. I think that's what I had seen was 12-gauge on here. Um, but I got some photos. You're probably seeing those right now of what the gun in mint condition looks like but uh, boom there it is so uh, that's the whole process and I'm going to start doing this to a lot of my other stuff that I have uh, all the knives and the other shotgun and rifle and we'll see what they all turn out looking alright thanks for watching